everyone, it's AG, and today I will be talking about the books that I read in January. So let's just jump into it. I read Whose Story Is This? Old Conflicts, New Chapters, written by Rebecca Solnit, and I read this specifically for the Our Shared Shelf Book Club, which is a feminist book club that was created by Emma Watson. This was actually one of the November-December picks, but I was a bit late, so uh, I read it mostly in January. And it is a collection of essays in which Solnit basically states that at this moment there is a fight over fundamental power within our society. So you have people of colour, people from the LGBTQ plus community and women fighting for their narrative. And this of course doesn't come with that pushback from those who are in power and those are mainly white men. So she talks about a multitude of aspects within society and there's just a lot of good stuff in here. I really enjoyed it. My favourite essay was All the Rage which basically helped me to understand that the best way to manage kind of like rage that you get from I guess like injustices of like I guess for me personally being like a woman and specifically a black woman that like the best thing to do is instead of like keeping that rage and fearing that you'll get retaliations from expressing your anger you move past that anger and that is something that i've been using recently a lot and it's just way better being able to manage your emotions and then sort of like trying to make the best out of every situation and yeah it's just helped me a lot so definitely would recommend to read this one also I'm not too sure if the video will come out after this one but I actually filmed a review talking about this book as well as the other November December pick which was also written by Solnit called uh, Cinderella Liberator so yeah great book read it then I read Ghostly Things volume 1 this is a manga which was written by Ushio Shirotori and it's basically about this girl who moves into a house that apparently is haunted by spirits and she herself is looking for I believe the book of death in order to find out what has happened to her mother anyway I was not a fan of this manga unfortunately it was just not very interesting it wasn't very captivating i didn't really care for the main character i didn't really like want to get to know her i know that sounds really bad but yeah it just wasn't for me so that's all i have to say with regards to ghostly things and then i read live love books by mark manson and this booklet was gifted to me by my local bookstore because apparently it was the week of the english book and so every person who bought a book that week received this booklet and it was all right it was okay i thought the first two sections in which he talks about life and love were very interesting in life he talks about like the four stages a human being goes uh, through and that was interesting in the sense that i got a new perspective to explore with regards to life and then the same actually with love he describes the different types of relationships that you have both um, romantic ones and platonic ones and yeah it was just really interesting in that aspect though books um he gives a lot of recommendations and a lot of the recommendations i wasn't really interested in and just kind of like the tone of the booklet wasn't really vibing with me you might know mark manson as the person who wrote the art of not giving a fuck and it has kind of like the same writing style and comedy and that's kind of like the thing that i didn't really enjoy about it because i'm someone who really enjoys humor when it's like cleverly done like things like jokes that are cleverly set up and here it's just funny because he's brash or like he uses a dirty word or something like that and yeah i'm just not really a fan of that so 
Yeah, I don't know. It was okay. Then I read Riot Baby by Toshi and Yevichi for the second time. I think I've talked about this book quite a lot on my channel, so I'll just quickly recap what it's all about. You have the siblings, Kev and Ella, who live in America, and their childhoods have basically been destroyed by racism and brutality. And so um, Ella, she leaves home at a very young age trying to escape it all, and then Kev, without basically the protection of his sister he gets involved with the wrong crowd and he ends up in jail as a teenager and that kind of like basically ruins his life and so basically Ella starts visiting Kev in prison both in supernatural and mundane ways because Ella has what she calls a thing which is a sort of supernatural power that lets her do uh, various things cool things and so she sort of like motivates him to start I don't know sort of like a revolution something that will burn everything down and so the first time I read this I had a hard time grasping a lot of things this is written in quite an elusive way uh, Toshi himself uh, said that he did that on purpose but for someone who isn't very familiar with American culture or like American history it was quite hard to grasp like even at some point I believe they moved from LA to New York and I didn't realize that they moved like from the east coast all the way to the west coast but yeah it was like a lot of those things like the gang culture or like the LA riots or like specific black men that had died that sort of like incited outrage so at the end of my first read I was feeling rather confused and very much so aware that I didn't grasp everything so I wanted to give it another try and this time I took my time to read it and research the stuff that I didn't understand and I had a completely different experience. I enjoyed it so much more. So if you're interested in a book that explores the black experience in America using fantastical elements, then I would definitely recommend this, though I will have to caution you to definitely take your time with this. And yeah, it was just really good. I'm really glad that I reread this book. Then I read Deep Work by Cal Newport and I'm saying read because I actually just skimmed through most of it because if you've seen my video about um, his other book, So Good They Can't Ignore You, then you'll know that I'm not really a fan of Cal Newport and the only reason why I kind of like picked up this book was because I already had it in my possession. So basically the essence of this book is to tell you that currently people are starting to lose the ability to concentrate on things for extended periods of time, which he calls deep work. However, at the same time, this trait is becoming incredibly valuable. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> He's basically saying deep work is very important. So if you want to be competitive in the job market, it is a skill you should work on and cherish. And yeah, he spends about 260 pages explaining this concept and it's kind of like the same way as he does with so good they can't ignore you because it's just a bunch of example of like white middle or upper class men explaining why they're successful because of deep work and like sort of disregarding the fact that they have so much more privilege than other people and so i just couldn't identify i started it a bit and then i was just kind of like flipping through it and I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, I know this, I know this. So I don't know, can you say that I read this book? I don't really think so. I actually just counted it as a DNF in my reading log. Then I read Dangerous Alliance by Yannicka Cohen and this was for the Epic Reads Heaven book club which is like a Dutch website where you have these different book clubs and you can sign up, tell them why you want to read the book and then if they approve, they send you the book. And so that's what happened to me with this book. 
basically this book is inspired by Jane Austen's work and it's about this girl named Lady Victoria. At some point her older sister flees from her husband back uh, to their home basically stating that she's being abused and so if for instance their father would die that would mean that the estate would be handed over to her sister's husband which isn't that great so now vicky has the problem of her trying to find a husband as soon as possible and so she ends up with three possibilities but she doesn't really know which guy she should pick now this sounds like an interesting premise also because there's some mystery because apparently like in between like the story people are trying to kill Vicky and you don't know who it is you have all these mysterious accidents that occur but the thing that I didn't like about this story is that after a hundred pages you already knew who she was going to pick basically because two of the three guys were assholes <laughs> And also because of the fact that this story was written from two different perspectives. Basically, Vicky's perspective and one of the suitors. So who would you think would become her husband? So yeah, that kind of like bummed me out because I still had like 300 pages left and I already knew what was sort of going to happen. And so you had a few surprises here and there, but like... The main thing, which for me was actually the romance, uh, that one, um, yeah, didn't do it for me. And apparently the other people that were in the book club felt the exact same way. So we were kind of like, oh, oh gosh. But um, yeah, I finished it and it was as I had predicted. So yeah, other than that, like the writing and stuff like that, that was fine. It's just the romance was just too predictable. Then I read Salt Slow by Julia Armfield and I read this for the Bellatrist Book Club, which is the one that was created by Emma Roberts and her friend Cara Price. This book was a short story collection that centered around women and their experiences and it included fantastical elements as well as gothic ones and mythic ones. And yeah, it was very interesting. I wasn't expecting it to be as dark as it was but I actually liked it even more because of it however I don't know for some reason it took me a very long time to get through all of the stories so I don't know exactly what it was that I guess sort of like prevented me from like just ripping through the entire collection because after having read all of the stories there wasn't really anyone that I say like oh wow I really disliked it. I actually thought they were all quite clever and interesting but yeah um, I'm still stewing on this question as to why it took me so long but maybe it's just reader's fatigue because I actually did read a lot uh, back in January. Then I read four volumes of the vampire manga Happiness um, by Shizo Oshimi and yeah this is just a great manga series I love it so much like it's dark it's easy to grasp and it's just a lot of fun although I do have to say that sometimes it's a, a bit unnecessarily sexual but yeah that is something that happens a lot when it comes to manga I don't know exactly why but I don't know at some point after having read so much manga I don't know it just doesn't phase me anymore and I kind of just like roll my eyes or just tune it out and just focus on the rest of the story and uh, yeah same happened here uh, I really enjoyed it also because at some point it switches focus and there's like a time jump and it's just really interesting seeing how like people becoming vampires I don't know like influence like people's life whoa what a shocker I know <laughs> Yeah, it's just a bit silly, but it's like great entertainment. And like I said, you can finish one of those volumes in like an hour. So you can go through it rather swiftly. Then I read book two of The Wicked Plus The Divine. And this one collects issues 12 up to 22. And I really enjoyed it. I do have to say that I 
did enjoy the latter half more just because you had this huge arc over these 22 issues and it finally came to its end so it was very exciting one thing i really enjoyed as well was that like the first couple of of uh, issues they used different artists and i think also colorists so uh, they're all in like different styles from like the regular the regular ones um i think there's one really distinct one as you can see here and here so yeah also if you don't know what this is about basically the wicked plus the divine every 90 years i believe wait i can just read it from the back of this comic because it summarizes it perfectly Every 90 years, 12 gods return as young people. They are loved, they are hated. In two years, they are all dead. It's happening now, it's happening again. So yes, you have these people who turn out to be gods and then there's just a lot of death and destruction. And it's great, really. I have book three and hopefully I'll be able to read that one quickly. Although I am still waiting for book four because this entire like comic book series came to an end last year so yeah i'm just waiting for book four to come out so i can ask that for my birthday and just conclude this entire comic book series because yeah it's just really good then i read horror store by grady hendrix and this is basically about an ikea-esque furniture store that apparently is haunted and I am sad to say that I didn't enjoy this one and I think this is also due to the fact that I listened to it because like seeing other people's reviews as well as like looking on the internet for like pictures of the book you can see that a lot of this book gets its charm from the visual like for instance you have illustrations of furniture and as the story progresses the furniture becomes more horrific and disturbing and so i sort of missed out on that but yeah regardless i think that i would have only slightly enjoyed the story a bit more also because i just felt that the storyline wasn't very strong or interesting so yeah it was just an okay listen i guess then I also listened to Barracoon by Zora Neale Hurston and that book was based off of interviews that Zora had with a man who went by the name of Kajo Lewis who was one of the people who came straight from Africa on the last known slave boat. And so in this book, he tells his life story. He talks about how it was like living in Africa, how he got caught and just his journey all the way to America, then working as a slave, becoming a free man again, finding a wife, having children. And yeah, it was just a very interesting account. And it really showed the resilience that Kajo had seeing like all the travesties that he had been through his entire life just the journey alone and like being caught and seeing like your family members or the people within your community just basically getting slaughtered in the most horrific way oh gosh i can't even like imagine what that must have been like and then being in america and just going through all different types of tragedies of like losing his kids and his wife so yeah it's definitely an interesting account and if you're interested in this type of stuff i would definitely recommend this book and also if you're interested in learning more about zora i actually made a video by the name of a portrait of the artist zora neale hurston in which i paint a portrait of her and just talk about her life and her work including barracoon so yeah i will put a link in the description box below i still have so many books to talk about oh my gosh i am low-key regretting reading so much but nevertheless let's keep on going <laughs> and then i also read no longer human by osamu dazai 
and the manga adaptation No Longer Human, which was created by Junji Ito. Now, I made a video about these two works in which I also talk extensively about the author Osamu Dasai. So if you're interested in that, I will put a link in the description box so you can watch it. Anyway, I thought this was incredibly interesting. Now, this story is about a man named Yozo Oba, and he basically has struggled his entire life trying to understand human beings. And he actually never considered himself as a human being. And so this book sort of chronicles his life from early childhood up to somewhere in his adulthood. And the interesting thing about this work is that a lot of the events that happen in Yozo Oba's life also occurred in the writer's Osami Dazai's life. But yeah, I talk about all of that in my video. But yeah, I thought this was an interesting but very dark read. And uh, yeah, definitely one of those books that really stays on your mind for a long time. Then I listened to another audiobook by Grady Hendrix and that was My Best Friend's Exorcism. And this was even Ugh, ah, uh, yeah, no, I didn't like this one whatsoever. It's about these two best friends and one of them, I think at the age of 16 or 17, gets possessed and then things start to go wrong and they have to perform an exorcism and that's basically what the story is about. Now, the reason why I didn't like this story is that I just absolutely detested the characters. They were not interesting. I didn't care what happened to them. Like, if they die, I'd be like, oh well, that's sad. Oh my gosh, that's really bad. But y you know what I mean, they're fictional, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I just didn't really have sympathy for them. And also in the book, there were like so many unnecessary racist stuff. Like this book is set, I guess like in the 70s or in the 80s. So they have this thing at school, which they call slave day. Basically you have slave owners and then slaves. And so the slaves have to do everything the slave owners tell them to do. And I'm like, why would you put that in there? Like, I know like the 70s, 80s must have been incredibly like racially insensitive, but like it doesn't help the plot forward like you you could have thought of something else come on and also there's this one point where one girl lost a lot of weight and then <laughs> one of the main characters is like oh my gosh you look so bad you look like an ethiopian and i'm like oh that was so unnecessary like why i did just didn't make any sense to me it was just really dumb and yeah like that on top of like the uninteresting storyline and the incredibly blank characters just made this book not very enjoyable then I read Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung Frazier and this book was so good. It's about this teenager who works as a pizza delivery girl and she is struggling with the death of her father and at the same time she also has to deal with an unexpected pregnancy. So one day this woman calls for a pizza with pickles on top and so when she delivers it these two women start bonding in a very unique unique way and that's kind of like what this story is about. The lady who ordered the pizza is struggling herself with trying to connect with her child and also trying to stay grounded and so yeah it was very interesting to learn about the dynamics of this relationship because clearly these characters are looking for something in each other and as the plot progresses you see how pizza girl slowly starts to get obsessed with this woman and yeah things start to get really wild and yeah i just really enjoyed this story it deals with a lot of difficult topics but that isn't to say that the entire atmosphere of this book is dark it's actually sometimes even funny and i think that's such like a true depiction of what life is because although 
there are struggles in your life there are always kind of like these funny and weird things going on at the same time so yeah like i said before i really enjoyed it and i would definitely recommend it it comes out in june so if you want to support the author you can pre-order the book then I also read Earthlings by Sayako Murata and Granta was so kind to give me a copy. This book comes out in October and in it Murata revisits the theme of conformity, of what happens when you're not able to or willing to conform to society. Now I can't talk too much about this because I was told to hold off um, from my review. So yeah. Then I read These Ghosts Are Family by Macy Card and this is also her debut novel. This is a family saga centered around a Jamaican family. In it you have Abel Paisley who several decades ago decided to fake his own death and um, sort of actually abandoned his family and this book sort of deals with the consequences of that decision and it also kind of like moves back and forth uh, through times um, exploring different parts of like the family tree yeah this was a terrific read i have an entire review on it i don't know if it will be up when this video goes up but i will leave a link in the description box when it is live this was card's debut novel and i was absolutely blown away also i had the amazing privilege of interviewing her and talking about the book so i don't know if it's up yet but also i will leave a link in the description box below but yeah it was just done so well there's so many different styles and distinct stories in here it's just a treat to read so i would definitely recommend you pick this one up then I also listened to Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie and the reason I did so was because the movie I believe is coming out in October and I just really wanted to know what the story was about and yeah it's interesting basically you have this lady who with her husband goes on a cruise ship or like an exploration through Egypt and you have all these people on a boat and then all of a sudden people start dying and then you have the French detective Henri Pierrot I believe who tries and solves the mystery and um, yeah sounds very interesting was quite interesting I personally didn't know how this book was going to end but I did feel that it was quite a satisfying end and then finally I read Lakewood by Megan Giddings and this story is about an African-American girl who is in college but has to drop out after the death of her grandmother because that is when they realize that they are in huge debt and so she needs to find a job. Eventually she finds one and so she joins a program where she has to undergo these tests and take these certain types of pills that can apparently do all these amazing things such as change your eye color or like erase bad memories. But quickly she starts to discover that everything isn't all rainbow and sunshine and so she has to start questioning how much is she willing to sacrifice in order to help out her family. This was such an interesting story, I have never read anything like it and it really just showcases how society feels to protect the weakest and then turns around to exploit them for their own benefit. There was a lot of information in here that had me shook things that happened that I had no idea of such as the Tuskegee syphilis experiments or Project Artichoke where they injected unknowing CIA agents with LSD which is crazy but yeah this novel was certainly a wild ride and so those were all of the books I read and listened to in the month of January thank you very much for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video a huge thank you to Klavik, Chris, Diane, Jen and Tara for supporting me over on Patreon.